All right, this is Uncle Jam back at it with another resource pack video. In this video, we are going to be going over some advanced animation options, which is provided to us by Optifine. So as you can see, my selector in my hotbar there is animated. Also, if you notice this villager here, he'll blink every once in a while. Let's see if we can catch him. There we go. And you can see in this ender chest here, I've added in a little portal animation there on the inside. So it allows you to animate anything in the game that default vanilla wouldn't allow you to animate. So obviously this method does require Optifine and we'll be going over showing you how to do all of these animations. We're going to be using the chest plate as an example. And at the end, I will show you the properties files for the blinking villager and this select bar just for some examples. So let's get into it. All right, so there's a couple things you're going to need in order to create your advanced animation file. The first thing is you need your image with all of the frames of animation. And the second thing is you need a document to tell the game how to implement these frames. So we're going to start off with the frame animation image. So we're going to need to decide what we want to animate. And in my case, I'm going to use the diamond chest plate as an example. So let's head into our resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode one in my resource pack series. We'll head into assets, into Minecraft and into textures. Now, in my case, I'm using the diamond chest plate just as an example. So I'm going to locate that texture. However, you can animate any texture in this whole textures document. So I'm going to head into models, into armor, and we'll see we have all of the armor files. Since I'm doing the diamond chest plate, I'm going to open up diamond layer one here with my image editing software, which is Pixelmator. You can use any, any image editing software. Now let me zoom into this document and we'll see what we can see. Now, as you can see, we have all of the different diamond layer armor pieces laid out in the document. Now I'm just focusing on the chest plate and I want to do the front of the chest plate. Now you can find templates for these various documents online or you can just kind of look and assume what you think may be the front of the chest plate or whatever piece you want to animate. So as you can see here, it looks like this section, if I select it, is going to be the front of the chest plate. So I'm going to actually select this section because I want to animate this section and I'm going to copy it. Now what we need to do is take note of the dimensions of this box that I have selected. Now, as you can see in my image editing software, it actually shows the dimensions right up here at the top of the screen. The width is eight pixels and the height is 11 pixels. Now we want to keep this in mind as it's going to come in handy in a second. Now we need to create a new document with the same width and the height as a variable of the number of animation frames we want. So let me explain what I mean. I'm going to head up here into Pixelmator and we're going to click new document. Now you can use any image editing software here and you'll see it auto filled in the width as eight and the height as 11. Now the width is correct. However, 11 will only allow us to fit one chest plate of animation in. So let's say I wanted to do four. I'm going to have to do 11 times four, which is 44. There we go. And we'll hit OK. So now I have a strip pulled up, which has room for four chest plate animations. So let me paste in my chest plate and we're going to layer it down the image like so here. So I'll paste in one. We'll line it up. We'll get another one in here. These I just copied from the previous image. There's another one and we'll fit our last one and you'll see they fit perfectly. Now, also one thing to note is you want to make sure the background is actually transparent. And as you can see, mine is white. So I'm just going to remove that. And you can see the transparency now shows on the background. Now we need to just create all of our different frames here in this image. So let me do that and get back to you. All right. So as you can see, I just created some quick demo images here. So the first frame of animation is going to have nothing on the diamond chest plate. The second one is going to have the number one, 
The third one's gonna have the number two, and the fourth one is gonna have the number three. Now this is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously in your pack you would not put numbers here, you would make it maybe some kind of glint or some kind of animation on the armor. And either way, this is just for demonstration purposes. Now we need to export our image. So we're gonna head into File, we're gonna click Export, and make sure we have PNG file selected. Now we can call it anything we want without capitals or spaces. So I'm gonna call it chest plate animation. There we go. And we'll hit export to the desktop. So there we go. Now we have our image over here on our desktop, ready to be implemented into the game. So now we need to implement this into our resource pack. So I'm gonna head back out of my armor folder here back into textures, back into the Minecraft folder. Now within this folder, you need a folder entitled MC Patcher. This is where we're gonna install our custom animations. Now, if you don't have this folder, you just need to right click and create a new folder entitled MC Patcher, no capitals or spaces. I already have it from previous videos and let's head inside. Now inside of this MC Patcher folder, we need a new folder entitled Anim. So we're going to create a new folder and it's A-N-I-M, exactly like that. No capitals or spaces. That's short for animation. So make sure your folder is titled exactly that and let's head inside. Now what we're going to do is just install our image right inside of here. Now we're halfway done. All we need now is the text document to tell the game how to implement these frames into the game. So let's create our text document. So on Mac, I'm gonna use text edit. On Windows, you can use notepad. We're gonna create a new document here. Make sure we make it a plain text document. And if you're on a Mac, head into preferences, open and save, change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one to ensure it will all work out. Now, as you can see from the image I pulled up on the screen, we have some required parameters we have to enter in. So I'm gonna start off with from. Now, after this, we have to specify the path to the image that we just created. Now, the image we just created is this one here, chestplateanimation.png. Keep in mind, my Mac is just hiding the extension of .png, but this is a PNG file. So, we're going to type from. Now, we need to say relative to where we place this properties file, which is a dot and a slash. So, what that's going to do is it's going to look for this image chestplateanimation.png relative to where we place this properties file. And because we're going to place this properties file in the same folder as the chestplateanimation.png, this won't be an issue. So we're going to type chestplateanimation.png. So that's the name of my file here. And because we're going to install this properties file within this location, it's going to look relative to where we place this properties file. That's what the dot and slash means. All right, now we need to move on to two. Now, one thing I wanna say here is all the next parameters that we have coming up underneath required, which is two X, Y, W, N, H, they all have to relate to this two parameter. They all are telling the game where exactly to overlay these animation textures on top of what image? So, let's start off with two. Now we need to tell the game what image file do we want to overlay this image onto. So, let's figure out where exactly that is because we need to specify the path to that image. So, let's back out of here, back into the Minecraft home folder, which is where our path is going to be starting at. So we don't have to specify the path to this folder here. It's automatically going to assume we are within this folder. So it's within textures, models, armor, and it is called diamond underscore layer underscore one. Now this is my personal case for this specific instance. However, your path might be if you're doing eyeballs for a villager or another mob it might be within entity or if you're doing a GUI screen might be within GUI it's all case specific however in my case it's within models armor and diamond layer one 
So we need to type that full path coming from the Minecraft folder. So it was textures, models, armor, and diamond layer one dot PNG. So you need to specify exactly to this image. Now that's great, except how does the game know where on this image to place the animation? Let me open this up with Pixelmator, just for visual purposes. Because right now, the game is just pointing to this image. It has no idea where to put it on this image. So that's what the next parameters are for. We need to tell the game we want it to go exactly in this spot right here, which we selected earlier. So there's a few things we're going to need to note about this section here. We need to note the X and Y coordinates of the upper left hand pixel. So the pixel in the upper left hand corner, which is this one right here. Now on my image editing software, I can see the coordinates of where exactly this is up at the top there. And we can see it is X 20 Y 20. So I suggest figuring out how to view those coordinates on your image editing software by doing a quick Google search for your specific software. Or if you can see them already, then that will save you some time. So as you can see, we have X 20 Y 20. So that's going to be our X and Y parameters. And we need to also specify the width and height of our selection. And as we can see, we already saw that earlier. Our width was eight pixels and our height was 11 pixels. So right there, we have all of our next values we need to plug in. So let's head back into our document here and we'll type X was 20. Remember X and Y is of the upper left hand corner pixel, the coordinates and now the width was eight and the height was 11. There we go. Now we have specified exactly where to implement the chest plate armor animation image into the game. So it's going to take our chest plate animation image. It's going to put it onto diamond layer one at these coordinates. So that's all the required parameters. So let's save our document now. Now we can call it anything we want. So I'm just going to call it chest plate and we need it to be a dot properties file. Make sure you spell properties right and make sure it's going to be a dot properties file. Otherwise it will not work. And if you're on a Mac, you need to change the encoding to Western windows, Latin one, and make sure this box here is unchecked. We don't want it to be saved as a dot text. We want it to be a dot properties file. Now we're going to click save. And there we go. Now we need to install this into our resource pack. So we need to put it back into that anim folder. So I'm going to back out of here, back into MC patcher and into anim. There's our image and we're going to drop it right inside here. Now let's head in game and see if it worked. So here I am back in game. And as you can see, it is working. It is flashing through all of those images. Now I know what you're thinking this is going way too fast. And you're right. Now, in order to edit the speed and the order of the frames, we have a couple of optional parameters which we can edit. So let me do that now. So here I am back in my text document and we're gonna start off with tile. Now what tile.n is gonna do is it allows you to specify a specific order in which you want the frames to appear. So tile.n and the n can start at zero. So tile zero, this is going to be the first frame or the first tile that we want to show up in our animation. Now, in my case, I just want to keep it in a straightforward order. So as you can see, I've pulled my image animation image up on the screen. And basically each tile starting from the top starts with zero and goes down for each frame. So the first frame I want to appear is actually going to be frame zero. Now we can set the duration of this frame. So we're going to type duration of zero is going to be a value in ticks. Now the default is one tick and that's why it was going so fast. Now a tick is just a game tick. So how fast the game ticks. 
So I'm going to change it to 20. So this will change. Now it will, it's going to display the first tile, tile 0, for 20 game ticks. Now next, we can type tile 1. So now we want to specify which frame do we want to come next. Now let's say, just to mix it up, we want it to actually count down from 3. So the next frame we want to come next is actually going to be frame 3. Because we want it to start at 3 and go 3, 2, 1. And the duration of this frame, we will make 20 as well. So I'm just going to space this out just so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. There we go. And now the next one we want, which is going to be our third frame, is going to be actually number 2. And the duration will make 20. Alright, so there we go. I've added in all of my properties here. So let me just explain what exactly I did. So keep in mind the tile.n parameter specifies the order of frames in which we want to appear. Now since I only have four frames, I only have frame 0, 1, 2, and 3. So our first image to appear is going to be frame 0. And that's going to appear for 20 ticks. Our second frame to appear is going to be frame 3, which is going to appear for 20 ticks. The third frame to appear is going to be frame 2, which is going to appear for 20 ticks. Fourth frame to appear is going to be frame 1 for 20 ticks. And I added a couple extra ones. So the fifth frame to appear is going to be frame 2 again. We've already seen it before, but I'm going to have it appear again for 20 ticks. And the last and final frame is going to be frame 3 for 20 ticks. So as you can see, this is how you set up the order and duration of your animations. So let's save this and head in game and see what it looks like. So here I am back in game. I'm going to reload my pack. And as we can see, it is very much slower and it is counting down from three. Three, two, one, two, three. So it's counting down and then going back up to three which is exactly what I had specified in my document. So as you can see, you can change all those values. This is just once again a demonstration to create some pretty complex animations for anything in the game. Any GUI screen, any mob, anything you want in the game, you can animate with Optifine and this method. So I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, maybe I'll quickly show you a couple documents of the blinking eyes and other things so you can get an idea on some of those other documents. All right, so here's the property file for the blinking villager, which was shown at the beginning of the video. As you can see, it's taking the blinking villager.png, which let's take a look at what it looks like here. Looks like uh, this guy here. Let's zoom in. So we can see we have the eyes open and the eyes closed and it is going to put it across all of these frame in this specific frame order and you can see a couple of the frames have various durations specified so that's the blinking villager and here is my selector for the hotbar as you can see i didn't actually specify any of the frame orders or frame time i just kept it in the order of my png file which was called select.png and it is overlaying it onto the GUI slash widgets.png which is where the selector is located. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned. There's more videos to come on the way and yeah, have a good day.